Hello guys, this is Karthik from ExilAutomation.com and this is part 10 of our ALM with Team Foundation Server Dev and QA focused video series. And in this part, we're going to talk about creating work items from Team Foundation Server Web. So before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 8 and part 9 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. Working with Team Foundation Server 2015 Web. So in the last video of part 8 and part 9 of this series, we discussed creating work items like PBI, task, link items, etc. from within Team Foundation Server Team Explorer. And in this video, we'll be discussing how to work with work items with Team Foundation Server Web 2015. So let's see in this in action. All right. So this is the Team Foundation Server Web 2015. And you can see that I have already logged in as an administrator and I have already navigated to our employee project. And you can see that I can see a lot of stuff here. And what we're going to do today is we're going to see how we can create the same work items like creating PBIs, creating the task or uh, creating the link items from Team Foundation Server Web. So for doing that, there is a very simple option. As you can see here, the create new. You can add a product backlog of items, a bug, a test case, or a task, or a feature, whatever you want to add, you can do it from here itself. So let's say I'm going to create a new PBI. And let's say I want to add a, a PBI here. Maybe this PBI is something like this. Application should support cross-platform. And then I'm going to assign this to, and you can see that it's all coming up here. Whatever we saw in the Visual Studio Team Explorer, the same option is coming up here that too very neatly. And I'm going to say this is going to be assigned to an auto user. And the state is new. And uh, the priority is going to be one. And I'm going to say the third required is uh, five hours. And the business values, of course, uh, one. And this is going to be a architectural stuff. So I'm going to save this. I'm not going to add any descriptions here for now, just for demonstration purpose. So let this be here. And you can see there is a save and a save and close option. So if I do a save, this will just save the value. And if I do a save and close, the window will also get closed. So you can also do a close from here with this button. All right. And now where should we see all these product backlog items and tasks which we previously created? It's very easy. You can just go to this work menu and you can see that all our product backlog items will be displayed. And it also has a, a product backlog items, uh, something like this, like first PBI. So if I click this backlog items, you can see that there is a first PBI and there is a create more robust friendly user friendly applications, which are we did from the Visual Studio and the one which we did right now. And let's say if I want to see all the tasks which we created there, of course, if you can see here, I have already created a child task for this. That's why this particular option is coming. In the ninth video of this particular video series, we created a child item for this particular PBI, and that's coming up here automatically. Right? So now let's say if I go to the sprint one, you can see all the PBIs which is assigned for this particular sprint will be displayed here. So it is showing me the create a more robust user friendly UI for the employee. It's coming up here and the application should support cross platform. Only two PBI is coming and there is our child item. And there is one more option here saying unparented. So if we see this, this is the one which we created in the eighth video of this video series. And while we were discussing this eighth video, we told that if we create a task and if we can't map this particular task with any of the PBI, then it will be left orphaned. So this is what has happened here. There is no parent for this particular task and it is unparented. So what we can do is if let's say I want to map this to our existing PBI, then the easiest way I can do is I can just drag this and I can drop this to a particular PBI and it will become a child item of this particular PBI. 
So now if I open this particular PBI and if I go to the link, you can see that there is a child item. Right? So that's super easy it is if we do it from Team Foundation Server Web Edition. And it is much easier. You can also see the boards. If I go to the board, we can see that based on a PBI, these task is also assigned. You can easily create one more task here by just clicking the plus, plus symbol from here. That easy it is. And also, I have not set any dates here for this particular sprint. When is the beginning date and when is the ending date? If I click that and if I do a start date and an end date, so let's say today is 17 and our sprint is going to be starting from this Monday and it is going to be ending maybe two weeks. So it is going to be ending on Friday of next week. And if I do a save and close and based on the effort, the graph will change. Can you see that it is saying only nine work days remaining? And there we go. It also has a graph. It also shows the burn down for each sprint here. So probably we'll talk more about this burn downs and what all those things. Maybe in a different video of uh, Execute Automation Channels video series. But as of now, just get informed that these are some of the features that you can see from the Team Foundation server web as well. All right. So this is how you can create a particular PBI and you can map the work items of task into the PBI and you can see all the child items. And also this is the option of board. You can also plan the capacities here. So if you go to the capacity, you can see all the users who are all working into this particular project for now will be displayed here. Right. And you can also set the task for here. You can say uh, you can set the day off time, what is the activity, and how much time it is required, and how much time they will spend for a particular day. All those things you can do here. And again, as I said, these particular stuffs will be covered in a different video of a different video series in Excel Automation channel. So don't bother about that as of now. Our focus is not that yet. The main focus is whatever we created in the Team Explorer of Visual Studio, and we need to see if that can be achieved from the Team Foundation Server Web Edition as well. And it is, of course, achievable. So this is how you can do all of them from Team Foundation Server 2015 Web Edition. So that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.